I'm just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, something to absolutely, true for you. because I can't something think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Ah, citizens of Netlandia, it is such a pleasure to be back with you for episode 162, recorded Friday, August 18th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have Stephen Griffith and Daniel Atherton with me this evening. Welcome, gentlemen, to uh, what is bound to be a, a show fraught with peril and gremlin bashing and all sorts of things as we're uh, all this is now our our second pass through this thing um so first off uh we do make mistakes so if you find one please let us know about it at o'reilly radio podcast at gmail.com or phone it in or text it in at four seven zero two 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 six seven five nine um i have been negligent because life has been beating me, very similar to what's been doing to Steven. Um, and I'm still editing some of the previous shows. So they're obviously not put out at the same time that we're doing a new show. So as I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted by Skype or whatever it was destroying us. Um, it doesn't really matter because even though it's a topical show and things are going going on as usual, they're also not going on as usual in that they're going at a breakneck speed and everything that is current is now stale. Like just Honestly, now. At, at this point, <laughs> I'm waiting, give it another month or two, and we will literally be in that scene from Spaceballs, we will be hitting ludicrous speed. Oh. <laughs> what are you watching? <laughs> the news. <laughs> the, the movie now comes out on tape before it's even finished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when will then be now? Soon. 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 <laughs> no, we know it will then be now, yesterday. Mm, yeah, well, no, we've already done that. We've already done that. And we failed to learn from history, therefore we're doing it again. So uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters that are continuing to aid us in this endeavor. That would be Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan of the Problem Attic Podcast, which debuted live uh, August 13th. So I hope that they are doing very well in all of their endeavors and are not having nearly the number of gremlins that I'm having to squash just tonight. So there we have that. Okay, now. <sighs> The Global Economic Pulse, our follow the money segment. This is, uh, that's what the first part of the show every week is going to be. Uh, if you haven't been, been following us, then uh, that's what you got. Uh, if you don't like the follow the money stuff, I don't know why you wouldn't like the follow the money stuff, then go into, you know, switch to the next one, you know, because B will be out soon if it isn't already. Uh, and that'll be more actual news stuff. But, you know, the news, you know, nothing runs without money. Money, 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 money. So we follow the markets. And this week, being the third week of the month, the Dow closed at 21,674.51. And that is down 183.81 over last week. And since we didn't have a show last week, last week was down 234.49 from the previous week. So many of those record-setting changes that we had, yeah, they went away. See, also, I come from the old school, Mm -hmm. you know, back in the 90s and 80s and such, where, you know, I remember that when the Dow was at 6,000, and that was amazing. And a 100 and 200-point swing would have had investors panicking and you know just ripping their hair out now we're seeing this uh, as just a regular thing and of course we're seeing something as you know four times almost yeah the value is like this is this is insanity this is just yeah our country's really got problems there's no money whatsoever to go around um guys (laughs) really really well 
Oh, I, remember, I remember when people there's money shit that it broke when it broke ten thousand. Like that was a big day on Wall Street. I do remember that. Yes, that they was were like oh my god, the first time in history. Wow, like okay, wow, yeah, we're we're doing good now. And that's, that was in the nineties. Yeah, that's in our living memory. That's not even that yeah. far. That's not even that far ago. Yeah. So, man, what has happened? <laughs> uh, wealth has been concentrated. And now it's being distilled to its very essence. Which is <laughs> no, nothing. It, it, it's <laughs> Again, the, you, you have markets rising and falling much more because the wealth is more concentrated. Yeah. Um, and so when people decide to buy shares or sell shares, it's not small amounts. It's massive amounts. Yeah. Because the wealth is just that concentrated. Well, speaking of the wealth, okay, so we also follow the NASDAQ and S&P 500. So that would be standards and pours. So the NASDAQ this week closed at 6216 and that's down uh, 40 bucks over the last week, which was down 95 over the previous week. Uh, and then the S&P closed at 2425.55, and that's down 15, almost 16 bucks, and that's that's down even further from 3551 last week. So not doing so good, but they were up the week before that. <laughs> so it's a it's it's a roller coaster. And if you're not in it for the long haul folks, I don't know what to tell you. Don't do day trading. You'll just go gray and pull out all the rest of your hair. Actually, well, if the, the greatest thing I ever heard about that was day traders sleep in larger beds, investors sleep soundly. That's good. I don't mind that. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, no, d- day trading is for for people who are are one have money to burn, mm-hmm. and two are are pr- practiced f- fiscal athletes. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> no, no. Day trading is a sprint. Yes, day trading is the sprint. Uh, but the market and, itself, you need to be the marathon runner in yeah. order to enjoy it. Well, again, you, you need to understand large-scale trends. Again, proper investment requires patience. Mm-hmm. Um, and understanding that there's going to be peaks and valleys. Uh, there are a number of things to invest in right now at, at this time. Uh, one of the things that the 90s definitely showed us is thanks to us being for for profit medicine invest in hospital chains because they're they are steady growth um, as well as invest, uh, as well as hospice care you know people are dying yeah. to get in there uh, it, it's <laughs> if, but if you're going to just buy stock um, you can't really Easy go joke. too bad with hospitals um, that that is steady and significant growth. So, if yeah, you're going to do that, that's if they're a commercial endeavor. There are many, many hospitals out there that are uh, private, yeah, you know, or simply owned by the churches. There are those as well, mm-hmm. and a but, lot of them. But no, you can invest investing in uh, in hospitals, solid. Uh, and then there are you know. The the other, if you're looking for more long term investments, there there are solid stocks out there. Um, Disney right now is at a bit of a downturn, so it's a good time to invest in them because they're going to go back up. But don't take financial advice from a podcast; it's not a good idea. So not let's uh, no. let's move along to the International Monetary Fund, the basket of currencies and how the U.S. dollar is shaping up is amongst, our, amongst our peers. Oh, silence. My Amazon Echo. I'm not going to say her name. Uh, <laughs> just chimed in. So, uh, this week, the uh, U.S. dollar did not fall against the euro. It did not fall against the Chinese yuan. And it fell uh, only a little bit. Only a little bit by the uh, Japanese yen, and um, did lose a little bit on the uh, Great British Pound, and Bitcoin remains stable. Uh, well, 
No, it, no, you're right. Looking it didn't. It, yeah. it didn't gain. No, if if those numbers go up, then it's it's not so good. Yeah, because traditionally the the pound is just you know worth more. Yeah. So uh, right now it's uh, the euro is one dollar. We'll get you point eight five euros. It'll get you six point six seven Chinese yuan. It'll get you one hundred nine. Point one eight Japanese yen. It'll get you point seven eight uh, pounds. And if you're looking for bitcoins, that hasn't uh, hasn't slacked off uh, too much over the last week. So it's still point zero 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 two four for a bitcoin. Yeah. And talking about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah, well, with the um, with the onset of all the ransomware. Bitcoin's a mm-hmm. thing, a big thing, because yeah. that's how they want to get paid. And they're seeing, they're able to track it to a degree. Yeah. So they're watching the the accounts where those Bitcoins were deposited for the, the big ransomware mm-hmm. projects. They're seeing some of them are getting, some of the finances are being moved around. So yeah. those, are, those are still quite active. Okay, and the barrel... Prices here for crude oh, oil. Yes. Uh, it's well, it's going down, which is interesting given the current Venezuela situation. Um, yes, so right, which we'll get into later. So from week one, it was forty nine dollars and fifty eight cents. Week two of this month was forty eight dollars and seventy eight cents, and this week it's forty eight dollars and fifty one cents. So that's down. 13 cents, then down 80 cents, and then down 27 cents. So prices are continuing to fall. Um, but still, that is all of those falling is less than it went up in the previous weeks. So it's still higher than it was before. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just that's just how it is. It did go up, you know, considerably. So we'll see if it uh, reaches some sort of equilibrium. I don't know when that would be. And then we've got the U.S. national debt. Oh. Oh, no, no. This is nothing. We'll get to the, we'll get to the groans and moans in a second. We mm-hmm. know that this is just going to keep going up. Yeah. But there's other things that we need to look at, too. So as of, uh, I, I missed calculating it uh, last week, but. It was up, uh, when I looked at it, it was August 3rd, 13th, and it was up uh, 2,796,020,810, at least at the time that I took the snapshot. This number keeps going no matter what. Uh, and as of today, it is the whole big number, 19974156039640 dollars which is up another 1,572,610, no, 572,610,965 from the week before. Yeah, it's a lot of money, a lot of money. Um, So we're just going to keep looking at that. But one thing that I noticed was a bigger number than the U.S. national debt on the usdebtclock.org. And I I wondered to myself, now what is that number? And I looked. So the number I'm talking about is the U.S. unfunded liabilities. So it's down on the bottom line there. <clears throat> and it is, <clears throat> I need a drum roll or something, $107 trillion, $176 billion, $295 million, $247,000. $453. At about 7 p.m. tonight, gentlemen, would you please go to usdebtclock.org and take a look at the number that is in the billions? It's staggering how quickly this changes. So where is that located? Bottom line, right in the middle, basically. U.S. unfunded Irish. liabilities. Right now we're at 177 billion. So just from 7 p.m. tonight, it went up another billion. Yep. 
another billion dollars in three hours. Yeah, one seventy seven. Hundred and seventy seven billion five hundred and twenty three million mm-hmm. and we it's the rest is changing too fast, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's really quick. So <clears throat> what is it? According to them, the US unfunded liability, G A A P, is the total US unfunded liability includes Social Security, Medicare Parts A, B and D, the federal debt held by the public and federal employee and veteran benefits. Basically stating that all of those are not currently covered at at full. So we're outspending ourselves on the benefits packages that we're putting out. Which was one of the things that helped bring about the uh, Greek crisis, financial crisis. Yeah. So by definition... Um, I pulled this from from a finance site. The amount at any given time by which future payment obligations exceed the present value of funds available to pay them. For example, a pension plan's payment obligations, including all income, death, and termination benefits owed, are comparable to the plan's present investment experience, and if the total plan obligations exceed the projected plan assets at any point in time, the plan has unfunded liability. So basically, you, what you're supposed to have to have everything funded is a proper investment schedule that is working in order to keep up with the demand at any time. So you're hedging your bets. You have to have all of those covered by something. Mm-hmm. The U.S. government does not have that. In spades. It exceeds the it exceeds for... the national debt by what a hundred ten percent? No, more than that. The U.S. national debt? Yeah, because we're almost at twenty by trillion. Al- we're almost at twenty almost... trillion for the for the national debt. Yeah. So five times. About five. About times? five times. Yeah. 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 That's ridiculous. Because that's that's already numbers that we cannot fathom in our head. And it's five times that? Mm-hmm. So, used in context, based on revenue projections from the Social Security Administration and the fact that the very populous baby boomer generation has begun to reach retirement age, the economists argue that the U.S. Social Security system would soon become an unfunded liability unless comprehensive reforms were made. So, this yeah. is what we're talking about on, on, you know, on Capitol Hill. When, when, you're, uh, when your representative gets up there and they're talking about how we can't afford this, there's no money for it, you know, this is another, another benefit that doesn't have any, anything to cover it. All of those things, well, they go, they go into this. The, the Republicans keep wanting to take money from the pot from Social Security and pay for our projects. Uh, including your tax rebates. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know Paul Ryan, I mean, one of his wet dreams is to get rid of Social Security entirely. That That is a goal. Yeah. As well as getting rid of Medicare. They want to get yeah. rid of pretty much every single social safety net that was set up since before the New Deal on through to now. Yeah. Every single safety net gone. So I want, I want to point out something here. The federal debt held by the public is the majority of the national debt. So these are not two separate numbers. The national debt is largely a part of this U.S. unfunded liability. That's one of the reasons why it's going up so fast. Mm-hmm. So... Perhaps this is the number that we ought to look at. Well, I mean, just looking at the in the the deck clock mm-hmm. and looking at largest budgeted items, um, you've got Social Security, and right now it is clocking in at nine hundred and thirty-five trillion. No, let's see here, thousands. Social Security, no, nine hundred and thirty-five billion. 
four hundred ninety-eight million and thirty-seven and counting thousand as it keeps climbing. Uh, Where are you looking at that? Largest budgeted items is under the U.S. Uh, national debt. Ah, okay, there it is. Uh, it's also uh, adjacent to what we're spending on Medicare, Medicaid, which okay, that's that's one plus trillion. Now those are those are budgeted items, but remember the the liability claim is based mm-hmm. on for what on what's forecast. Yeah, what, that's the what forecast. is going to be needed. And at that point, the Social Security liability is $16 trillion. So, though we might be able to pay out now, at some point in the future, those funds are gone. Because it can't keep up with demand. Now, that is one of... It, surprisingly enough, this is actually one of the positive arguments for UBI. Right. Because Social Security would go away because it would be rolled into UBI. Yes. Yeah. Now, UBI, for those of you that are just joining us, <laughs> is universal basic income, where the government basically takes all of these entitlements and all of these programs and essentially cuts you a check as your basic living expense out of what you would pay in taxes. It, essentially. It, yeah, it, it's it, it's a little more complicated than that, but it's not everything is. It's not as complicated, <laughs> but um, again, the more studies that we're getting, and we're getting a lot more. Um, though the the interesting thing is, with each study, it sh- really frames each individual culture that is practicing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but a few of the universal takeaways is that. Uh, health costs go significantly down. Financial stress is a stress on the human body and distress, negative stress mm-hmm. on the human body causes illness. Yeah. Uh, um, and so by relieving that financial stress, you have healthier people. We spend tons and tons of money here on healthcare. Um, because but when somebody uh, we had leads, we had like a two hour episode about universal basic income and yeah. how and how that would actually work out. So I, I encourage our listeners to go back to that go because back. it was way more thorough than what we're going to do here. <laughs> yeah, no, but the the what the things that we can actually roll into UBI, um, those federal pensions that you see there, mm-hmm. Social Security, um, those can be rolled in to UBI. Uh, one of the programs that should not be rolled into UBI and should be kept separate, and studies are proving this, is um, your, your, your food stamps, your, your WIC programs, uh, anything where you're, you're getting people food, that should be kept separate. Really? And yes. Um, and most of this is because emergencies happen. Um, so... Something comes up if there is a medical emergency, a uh, car shuts down, there's a fire. Uh, you want to make sure that these people are still being fed. So you want to keep those programs funded and keep them separately funded. Um, so uh, especially mm. when it comes to like um, – School lunches and things like that, those can't go away. Those you need to keep a hold of. But a lot of your federal pensions, Social Security, those can those social safety nets can get rolled into UBI. But certain social safety nets should be kept separate. This is one of the things that I'm starting to learn from, from these studies. Well, that's important. So, so things also like health care, a universal uh, basic health care, would also be best kept separate. Yeah, no, that should be a separate set of taxes and dealt with separately. However, um, a lot of the veterans' benefits, especially for health care and also all of Medicare Part A, B, A, B, and yeah. D, all of those could then be rolled into a universal basic health care as well. Yeah, you, a lot of your veterans' affairs stuff could actually the, – the pressures – It's mostly keeping them healthy. Al- could be alleviated by rolling a number of things <clears throat> in. 
also again you have your your pensions for soldiers that have served long enough um, yeah. or are still in the military. Spend the, twenty. What, those, what's the retirement plan? It's uh, twenty years, and then you get half pay for the uh, rest of your life. I'm not entirely certain that that is not my area of expertise, but. Uh, we have Google Foo for that. Yeah, that, those were numbers uh, that I heard. I think just this week, by by somebody. But again, those That's are things lot. that can be rolled, rolled into UBI and and take those pressures off of our defense spending in a way, um, and put it towards this communal social safety net. Also, again, going towards a single payer system. If we actually had single payer, we'd be paying a lot less for healthcare. Um, because mm-hmm. remember, folks, your taxes go to help cover every single uninsured person that shows up to a hospital. Yeah. Um, as well as there's loss for individuals who go to hospital, are uninsured, and died. That is just a full on loss. Yeah. And, and costs taxpayers inordinate amounts of money. It's expensive so, to buy. Incredibly so, it really, here in the United States, we're yeah. one of the most expensive. We are the most expensive when it comes to dying and living, as it seems. <laughs> yes, <laughs> ironic we, that we, is. We are bad at this. We're not um, for yeah. We we got some problems, but but uh, no, rolling into a a single payer health healthcare system would be saving us so much money by streamlining things. When you're, you're talking about clarifications, one of the things that Republicans love to tout, and in a way is right, is clarification and simplification of our tax systems. My opinion, they want to oversimplify things by having a flat tax. Flat taxes are bad. Um, You want progressive taxes because progressive taxes help you raise more money in a better way. Yes, it's more complicated, but it's getting you more money in a better fashion. And also, doesn't tax your system as much. Flat taxes will actually overtax your economy. Well, as a, a well-thought-out progressive tax system keeps the money flowing in the economy. Makes it safer so that it can take the slings and arrows of life and not crash. I agree. All of this is uh, is 100% true, and we definitely need to look at that more. I am not sure that anybody heard the things that you were saying. Oh, dear. Uh, so, it's okay. It's all right. I've got it on another, another source. This is why I do the things that I do the way that I do them, and unfortunate that that's also one of the reasons why it takes longer to get things out. Uh if anybody would like to help me just edit the show, I'd be I'd be happy with that too. So, with that, I believe that that's going to uh, going to give us an end here, a little end point, and then we will start again. So, if you've liked what we've done here today, tonight, etc., please help us out. There are a few ways you can donate to the show through www.batreon.com slash overly radio, and well, get some perks here and there when I can possibly make them available. Also, make the algorithm works. All the algorithms work for us by reviewing us on the iTunes, the Spreaker, the Stitcher, the wherever you happen to find us, and that'll help boost our ranking. And use your words. Tell somebody about us. Of course, engage with us directly. Send that message over to the social medias at the on the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if they're more talkative sort, we've got that phone number, 470-222-ORLY. That's 6759. And it's always ready to take your call or your text. Hey, buddy. Nah. I got it. Okay. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you or your loved ones. And, of course, best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been Overly Radio, part of the Random Max Company. This is work license under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0, United States license. I should probably make that a 4.0. i got to look at it. Including the music Rocket and PEMGA created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. And we'll see you real soon for Trash Day.
Yeah. Ugh, <coughs> gesundheit. <coughs> Yay. Thanks. Yeah. By the way, if you, if you want your head to hurt when it comes to the military retirement pay system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've changed, like, over the last 30 years, they've changed through, like, four different types. Um, the final pay and high 36 system means you, at, at 20 years, you get half pay, and if you stay in longer than 20 years, that half goes up by 2.5% for every year of service. So if you serve 40 years, you get 100% of your pay. Uh, there's the CSB Redux system, which is you get 40%, but for every year past 40%, you get 3.5 added to that un- for years between 21 and 30, and then 2.5 for years between 30 and 40. So at 40%, 40 years, you get 100%. Then there's the blended retirement system, in which case you have to work, be in the military for longer than 40 years to get the 100%. Mm. And, and we're at which point or now? Or at least 40, possibly longer. Well, no, right now... Uh, the, the way it does is if you enter service prior to 80, you're eligible for final pay. Between September 8th of 1980 and August of 86, you have the high 36 system. Okay. Uh, as of August 1986, you have the redux system, which means you can either do the high 36 or redux. Uh, if you may, didn't make a choice, you're automatically in the high 36, which means they take the average of your pay over the last 36 months. The highest, the highest year you had that. They average that, and then that's when all the percentages come in. Uh, huh. The newest one they've done is as of December 31st, 2017, so this year, will be the blended retirement system. If you enter between December 31st, 2005, and January 1st, of 2018, you will have the choice to be enrolled in the blended system or remain in today's current retirement system. But, of course, after this December. And the blended system, again, was what? The blended system, let me go back up to that one. For the blended retirement system, you get 2% for each year of service. Okay. So just straight. So no, at no like years, you're at, starting at X and then, then going up. No, yeah. it's for every... Okay. At 20 years, you've now got 40%. At 40 years, you now have 80%. Mm. That's so you'd have to go for 50 years of active military service to get the 100 percent. That is almost impossible. So assuming you went in as you would 18, 18, which means chance of becoming an officer is fairly low. Let's be honest here. Unless you're hardcore doing that. You are now you're in almost 70. Yeah. By well, the well, time you can retire at 100 percent pay. Well, yeah, but no, nobody's going to retire at 100 percent pay. I mean, re- really, that's unlikely to begin with. Yeah. But uh, you know, what, Even, what's a good living wage? I mean, re- really, a lot of, and that's of the pay at your last rank level. Mm-hmm. So if I I'm unfamiliar with them, I'm sure there are people screaming at us right now. It's like that's oh, a G8 or whatever, a G, you know, etc. Uh, I don't know. Because uh, I mean, I, if you guys know, know that, feel free to message us and do it. Yes, I just please got, call yeah. us and let us know. We yeah, got military.com, and I can look at those charts all day long, but I've never served, so I don't know the details that people who actually have to live in that system. Yeah, if you, you feel know, free to let us know of. about it. But yeah, that's that's definitely something interesting to to look at, and that would be part of that that whole trying to understand that liability thing and yeah. how weird that number would have to be because that's just that's enron level accounting right there mm-hmm. trying to figure out <laughs> you know well the, again you're having to do it for each individual serviceman at their pay rate at their pay scale right averaging those previous years together to find that number and then doing the percentages yeah so at at best it's just an estimate and kind of a bad one at that uh, again, it's e- each individual is their own little snowflake, and each one of them carries a specific number. Yes, but they also have they have a lot of people die, so they're not in as long. But then they would still Fair. have to pay out death benefits to the beneficiaries, and but, that is its own calculation and its own level of math. Right. This is why bureaucracy ex- exists. Yeah, to figure out all the math behind. All the things that have to go into 
making it worthwhile to fight. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I, Again, uh, we don't. If have you want to buying the farm anymore, you know, you could. You too could go in and and be part of the military service. And you know where you'd probably be the most valuable? Accounting. <laughs> You'd be really useful right there. You'd never uh, see any I, action except a calculator and a pen. <laughs> again, I'm I'm playing as soon as I can. Go back to school and get my degree. Big, accounting. big spreadsheets, really big. Well, doing again, this kind book, of thing. <laughs> book keep, there's always somebody who is needed for doing the math and and keeping the books because other people yeah. don't want to. Yeah, and yep. for some reason, some people like this. I don't understand them. I really uh, don't. I, 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 I want I want to better understand this because this is what actually makes the world go round. This is true. This is true. <laughs> we've we've said that here on the show many many times. Follow the money. Follow the money. And with that, we should probably get into the rest of the show. Oh, trash day! Definitely followed go. the money. Yeah, and it's not just going to be trash day. There's there's some interesting stuff in here too. So hope to make it make it an interesting romp through the through the garbage. So, oh, so well, here first we go. You have to start with true garbage. Yep. I'm, I'm ready to be Trash Panda. All right, Trash Panda. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> 